A couple of weeks ago I made a video on how to use physics in Blender to make a suspension rig on a tank. Now today I'm going to show you how to use that physics rig to make some animations. Alright guys, now before we start animating this, I want to quickly explain how exactly this animation is going to work. Now most road vehicles have a mechanism inside called a differential. And this is a mechanism that basically allows the wheels of the vehicle to turn at different speeds. And without this mechanism, it would be impossible for the vehicle to turn. Now, not all vehicles have this thing, not all vehicles need it, but uh, as far as I know, most tanks do have a differential. And let me explain to you using my old rig here how exactly this works. And uh, this is a rig that I made using constraints. I have another video on how to make this thing. I'll link a tutorial in the description below. But basically, the way it works is when a tank turns, the tracks are not turning at the same speed, okay? You can see when the tank turns to the right, the tr track on the left side is rotating pretty quickly, but the one on the right side is barely moving at all, okay? And we can do the same thing on the other side. When the tank turns to the left side, the right track is moving pretty fast, but the left track is barely moving at all, okay? So basically the way we can animate a tank and make it turn to the left or the right is that we can control the amount of power being added to each wheel separately. So if we want the tank to turn to the right, we're going to make it so there's a lot of power being added to the left track, but not a lot of power being added to the right track. And the same thing on the other side. So lots of power in the right track, but not a lot of power in the left track. And that way our tank is going to rotate in whichever direction we want it to. Alright, so now let's open up our physics rig. And I have another tutorial where I showed you guys how to make this thing. That was my last video, and I'm going to put the link for that in the description. So be sure to check that out because that's really important for this video. In fact, you can't even follow this video if you don't have a rig uh, set up the same way. So be sure to check that out. But anyway, the first thing we want to do with this rig is make the tank move forward. Okay? And you can see that when you play your animation, uh, the physics are working fine. You can see we have a suspension set up and there's gravity pulling the tracks down, but the, track, uh, the tank is not moving anywhere. All right? And now the easiest way to fix that problem, or the easiest way to just add some, uh, some movement there, is to select our motor constraint here and then we go over to our physics tab and we go to target velocity and we can set that to 20 and we're going to set the max impulse to 100 and we're going to do the same thing on the other wheel on the left side and now if you play the animation make sure you play it from zero by the way when you play the animation you can see that the tank slowly starts moving forward and that works just fine but the reason i don't like to do this is because then in the beginning when you play the animation you can see that we have some wheel spin there all right, and that looks a little bit silly. Now the reason that happens is because, well, before we play the animation, uh, the tank is not on the ground yet, and we have to wait a little bit before the tank settles on the ground. And until that happens, the tracks are not in contact with the with the sprockets back here yet, and there's no friction between them, and then uh, that means that the tr wheels are just spinning freely without moving the tracks. So the way we can fix that is that we don't add any power to the wheels until the tank is settled on the ground. Okay. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to select the motor constraints and we're going to remove all this power input that we just created. Okay, let's set that to zero on both, uh, both of the wheels. And then we're going to go to something like frame 50, because by frame 50 it's going to be pretty settled on the ground. All right. So on frame 50, we're going to select our motor constraint on the right side here, and we're going to set the target velocity to zero, max impulse to zero, and we're going to add some keyframes with zero on both power inputs, and do that on the other wheel as well. And now we're going to go to frame 51, okay, and then we're going to select the constraints again, and that's when we're going to start adding some power, okay. So let's set the target velocity to 20 now, and the max impulse to 100, and let's lock the keyframes right there. And of course, the same thing on the other wheel. Target 20, max impulse 100, and set the keyframes right there. And the reason we have two keyframes there is because uh, we have no power being added up to frame 50, and then on frame 51, we suddenly start getting power, okay. And that's exactly what we want. So yeah, you can see that now on frame 50, the tank is slowly going to start moving forward. And that, that works a little bit better because now there's no wheel spin in the beginning, as you can see here. And now once our tank accelerates a little bit, we're going to want to make this thing turn to the right. So let's go to something like frame 250. And now we're going to do exactly what I explained to you in the intro of this video. Okay, so we're going to start removing the power from this track. This track is going to continue to move at the same speed, but this one's going to slow down, and that's going to allow the tank to turn to the right side. Okay, so let's select our right wheel constraint in the back here, and we're going to set another keyframe with the same settings on frame 250. And you can see that it's going to create this bar here, and that means that uh, the settings are exactly the same between uh, these two keyframes here. So on frame uh, 250, we have the new keyframe, but then we're going to go to frame 251, just one frame ahead, 
and we're going to do something different. We're going to set a negative target velocity, and that's going to slow the tracks down. It's essentially going to work like a brake. Okay, so we're going to set the target velocity to minus 20, and we're going to leave the maximum pulse on 100, and then we're going to lock the new keyframes like that. And we're going to keep that setting up until about uh, 100 frames later. Okay, so we're going to go to frame 350 now, and we're going to add another keyframe with the same settings. Okay, and that way the track is going to slow down for 100 frames, and then after 100 frames, it's going to go back to its original uh, original power. So it's going to go back to moving at full speed. And we're going to do that by adding another keyframe after the frame that we just created, and we're going to set that back to 20 and not, and not minus 20. Okay, that's really important here. So let's go back to the beginning and let's play our animation again. Okay, the tank starts moving here and it continues to slowly accelerate all the way until the frame 250. And at that point, this track starts slowing down. And then after frame 350, it starts uh, speeding up again. And now you can see that our tank turned to the right a little bit, but now it continues to move straight because now the tracks are turning at the same speed again. All right. And you can control the amount by which it rotates by changing the amount of time you have uh, that the track is rotating at a slower speed. Okay, so if you want it to turn less, you want to select these two keyframes on the end, and you want to move those backwards a little bit, just so that the tracks spend less time with the differing uh, rotation speeds. Uh, of course, if you want to make it turn more, you can push this further to the right, and then it's going to spend more time rotating, and it's going to uh, f rotate further to the right. But for now, I'm going to leave it at this, okay? So let's see if that works fine. Again, let's play the animation, and now the tank starts accelerating, okay? And then we get to this frame where it starts turning to the right. And then it slowly starts uh, accelerating again at this point. And now the tank rotated by about 45 degrees or something like that. And then after some uh, time, we want to do the same thing on the other side. We want to make the tank move and turn to the right side or to the left side now. So we're going to go to frame 500. And now we're going to start slowing down the left track. Okay, so we're going to select this constraint here. And we're going to add another keyframe with the same settings as before. So you have this long line here. That means that all the way up until this point, from the beginning, the track uh, here had the same amount of input. Okay, but now in frame 501, we're going to add another keyframe here, and this one's going to have minus 20 on the power. Okay, so the same thing as we did with the other track. And again, we're going to do that for about 100 frames. Okay, so 100 frame frames later, we're going to set the same keyframe. Okay, and then on frame 601 we're going to return it back to the original power input. So we're going to set the target velocity again to 20, and we're going to leave the max impulse on 100. And let's set those keyframes there. And that should then straighten up the tank, and then the tank should continue to move uh, in this direction at about 45 degrees to the left, or maybe a little bit less. So let's play our animation. Let's see how this works now. Now the track, uh, tank starts moving forward. At this point, it should start moving to the right a little bit, and that's exactly what it does. So this is still working fine. And then it starts straightening up again. And once it's fully straightened out, then this track starts slowing down. And that starts turning our tank to the left. Now, well, it turned about uh, the, the same amount. So it's, it turned by about 45 degrees, maybe a little bit more. So again, you can control this and make it move a little bit more to the other side or a little bit less to the other side. And that's up to you. That depends on what you want to do with your animation. But that's really all you have to do to animate this tank. And of course, you can add some bumps to the terrain if you want to make it a little bit more interesting, if you want to make the suspension show. But I'm not going to do that for this demonstration because I'm just trying to keep it simple here. I hope you guys find that helpful and I hope you can render some cool animations with this. Uh, if you want me to show you how to make some other animations for a tank, such as a shooting animation or something like that, do let me know in the comments because I would also like to make a video on that as well. But thanks for watching guys and I hope to see you around.